Are you tired of the typical garage disaster? I'm gonna cover five tips to go from this to this, including some products and ideas that you probably haven't heard of. Garage greatness awaits. Your garage or shop is a sanctuary, and chances are you agree with me if you're watching this video, but many of us have let these sanctuaries devolve into garbage heaps. Can anyone else relate? Now, if you don't know, I'm currently building a shed in the backyard, and one of the biggest reasons for that is to free up this space. So some of the stuff will eventually go in there. But in this video, I wanna transform the space and share some tips so you can get your space to the next level so you can flex on the neighbors with a killer setup, even if you've got kids that are constantly trying to trash it. And tip number one is to take a look at your lighting. You could have the coolest toys, but bad lighting will make it look dingy and uninviting. Or depending what kind of work you do in here, borderline unsafe. In my opinion, this is the best bang for your buck upgrade you can do in here. I've got a video where I transformed this garage using cheap LED fixtures like this. I've also had a lot of success with the Barina strip fixtures that I put in my last shop. And I'll leave a link down below to ones I've had success with or ones that I recommend. The market has been flooded with inexpensive LED options and there are some that are better than others. It's worth choosing the right one for your space. All right, and for tip number two, we started at the ceiling, but now let's take a look at the floor. One of the most overlooked things in a garage or shop is the floor itself. I laid down this epoxy floor in my garage about two years ago, and I've got a full video on how I did that if you wanna go check it out. Now, epoxy floors not only look great and can brighten up the space, but they also make things like cleanup really easy. Everything from sawdust to car oil either sweeps or wipes up easily on an epoxy floor. And just like LED lighting, there are lots out there to choose from. So I'll leave some good ones linked down in that description box. But here's the bottom line. If you can walk into a big box store and buy an epoxy flooring kit, don't buy it. If there's one thing you need to know about epoxy flooring is it should have 100% solids and that you should pay attention to the thickness. Most of the cheap options out there are thin, watered down varieties that will peel up. The last thing you wanna do is have to strip and reapply it a couple years down the road. You really do get what you pay for. Now, if you don't wanna go the epoxy route, there's other great options out there like garage floor tiles and even rubber mats. Pick the option that best suits you and how you use your space. I promise you'll be glad you did. Now, tip number three is to make utilities easy to access and use. Take a shop vac, for example. A very handy tool for cleaning up around the garage or shop or even a vehicle. And if it's tucked in a corner behind a pile of stuff, chances are you're probably not gonna use it. Instead, mount it in a dedicated spot like I have here on the wall. It's close to the opening here at the garage door, making it easy to vacuum out things like cars. It's a really handy tool that gets a lot of use because it's accessible. And obviously the same goes for retractable power and air hoses. Having these strategically placed around your garage or shop not only means that things stay nice and tidy, but also should make your life a lot easier when you need them. But Here's a utility that you probably haven't thought of in the same way, and that is a pressure washer. This is the Grand Falls Pressure Washer Pro by Giraffe Tools, and I've had my eye on this guy for a while now. It's a wall-mounted electric pressure washer with a retractable hose. Now, I don't know about you, but a pressure washer comes in really handy around a garage or a shop, but the problem is you either don't have one or you don't want to get it out to use it. So why not have it mounted in a convenient spot where using it is as simple as flipping on a switch and pulling out the hose? And I think this little wall next to the door is the perfect spot. And the installation process couldn't be easier. Just mount the included plate to the wall, attaching directly to studs and the wall anchors that are provided in the kit. Ideally, this thing needs to be mounted about two to three feet off the floor. And I know most garages probably don't have a convenient water spigot right here to connect to. But if you didn't, you could also mount this thing close to a garage door so that you can pull a hose up to it and connect it whenever you need to use it. Now, electric pressure washers are not gonna strip paint, but this little guy is rated for a max pressure of 2,500 PSI at a flow rate of 1.2 to 1.3 gallons per minute. Meaning it specs out towards the top end of the electric pressure washer market. And with a hose length of 100 feet, it's more than enough to tackle jobs around the shop or the driveway. It'll make things like washing cars and keeping the driveway clean a breeze. And you get all of that in this compact package that reels up neatly against the wall. And on the unit itself, we've got the water inlet on this side. We've got a little holder back here and a soap dispenser that you can hook up when you're washing things like a car. On the opposite side is the on off switch. And then finally the lance kind of tucks into a spot back there. The front half of the nozzle rotates so that you can kind of alter your spray pattern however you want. Comes with a selection of tips ranging from zero to 40 degrees that easily interchange in the tip itself with a simple kind of locking connection. Easy to change those out. I really like that it's lightweight and has a pretty small form factor. And remember, because it's here and ready, I'll be way more likely to use it. Now, full transparency, Giraffe Tools was kind enough to send me this unit, but they've also got a lot of really cool retractable garden hose reels that I'm probably gonna add to the outside of the house too. And tip number four is to use your wall space carefully. It's easy to waste the space in your garage or shop, but you should really consider every square foot of available space a precious resource, especially those areas within arm's reach. Now you can use a rack system to store items like this, and they're pretty good. As long 
long as most of the things you're storing are relatively the same length. But there are better options to better utilize that space, such as a slat wall system like this. Now these are typically a PVC product that come in long panels that stack on top of each other and are mounted directly to the wall. And once they're all mounted and secured to the wall, they form these little channels that different kinds of hangers can slide into. Think of it as like a French cleat system for your entire garage. Now I went ahead and bought a bunch of panels in both four foot and eight foot lengths. These ones in particular are from Crown Wall. I'll have this all linked below. So let's get this stuff up on the wall and we'll see how it looks. And while I'm doing that, let me tell you about the sponsor of this video, Bespoke Post. Now, if you've never heard of this, it's basically a monthly membership that sends you a box of awesome stuff that's curated for your tastes from under the radar brands that you probably wouldn't have found on your own. And one thing that I really like is that 90% of the products in the boxes come from small brands, many of which are based here in the US. Now, here's how it works. It's free to join and you only pay for what you want. Each month, a box of awesome is curated for you based on a quiz you take on their website. It helps them establish kind of what your interests are and maybe what you're not so interested in. And before anything is ever shipped, you get a preview so that you can either keep it, swap it for something else, or just pass all together. Again, there's no charge, you just pay for what you want. So each box that you choose to have delivered is about $70 in value, but you pay a fraction of that price. Now, I don't have to remind you that the holidays are coming up, but something like this makes a great gift for somebody that you just don't know what to buy for. So I've got three boxes here that were sent to me based on my interest. So let's take a look. First one is the Tonto box. Yeah. Check this thing out. It's a Damascus steel bladed knife. I really like cool knives and I wouldn't know where to buy this thing. So it comes with a really nice little leather sheath here. Very cool gift for somebody who also likes knives. All right, second box, we got the retreat kit, a hammock and an outdoor blanket. So as you know, I'm building a shed and I want to relax out there. And I think this would be a really cool way to do that. And finally, for number three, we've got the split kit. I'm excited for this one because, you know, we're putting a fire pit at the camp house shed and uh, check this bad boy out. Got a hatchet to cut my own firewood. Well, split my own firewood. So I hope this gives you an idea of kind of what the boxes look like and what would come in them. So if you want to check out Bespoke Post for yourself or maybe someone else as a gift this holiday season, check out the link down below and use the code SHOPNATION at checkout. This will get you 20% off your first box of awesome. Again, click the link and use SHOPNATION at checkout. Big thanks to Bespoke Post for supporting the channel and let's get back to it. What a transformation. I think it's a pretty safe bet that this is gonna transform just about any garage out there. Never mind the functionality, I think just from a visual perspective, the slat wall adds a really cool dynamic to the walls of the garage. And one of the things I really like about it is that it's modular. So maybe there's areas of wall that you wanna add this to later, like here above my door. It's just as simple as throwing some more slats on the wall. Now there are many types of this stuff out there, from cheap garbage to over-engineered, super expensive solutions. This one I put up from Crown Wall is kind of middle of the road, can still support a ton of weight and is affordable. And of course, everything I'm using is going to be linked down below. But we're not quite done yet. Now let's add the hangers and the baskets. Now, of course, over time, you can change things up. So it can really evolve with you and your space. Honestly, I think one of my favorite things is this basket for sports equipment. It's just a convenient place for it all to get collected back into. Of course, the trick is to make sure that the kids actually put it back in there. And another thing I like is just the sheer number of different things you can put on the wall. And I realized that I probably ordered too many hooks and too little baskets and shelves. So I'm gonna have to go back and order those. So what happens if you've applied tips one through four already? Lights are looking great, floors looking awesome, utilities are abundant and available, and the walls are decked out. Then what? Well, I say, look up. It is an often underlooked but great resource for additional storage in your space. Now, obviously you don't want to store things up there that you need all the time, but there is one option that might be a good compromise. This is a motorized platform lift and is kind of a game changer when it comes to keeping things up close to the ceiling. Now this one in particular is from Garage Gator and it has a platform measuring six feet by three feet. And you can raise and lower the platform, which has a travel of about 10 feet with this wall mounted pendant and kind of a cool locking feature if you've got little kids that are gonna try and ride it. Let's be honest, we'd all try it. And with a rated capacity of 220 pounds, you can store quite a bit of stuff on that platform. Now I'm not gonna say the installation process is something you can do in 30 minutes, but it's pretty straightforward. And once I wrestled everything into place, I was able to make a few adjustments to get everything nice and level and at a height that I like. The one thing you need to be aware of is that you do need to run power at least somewhere near the unit. 
the power cord's only about six feet long. Now my garage has kind of a unique feature in that I have a stairwell heading down to the basement. And previously this whole space above it was just kind of a big giant waste. Plus since we've got this half wall here, it makes loading and unloading the items a lot easier. So right now up there, I've got a set of cornhole boards, a kid wagon, and a giant cooler that we just use kind of every once in a while. I did try to put a couple of the kids' power wheels up there because I thought that'd be a good spot for them. But as soon as I started lifting it up, platform kind of tilted, they rolled off and about killed me. And I'm kind of upset I didn't have the camera on. But you can imagine what it looked like. So I would not recommend storing things up there that have wheels that can roll because that platform does sway a little bit. Now these motorized platforms are not cheap. There's several versions out there, some of which are like close to $2,000. This one from Garage Gator is 650 bucks. So I think it's the best value. I've been pretty impressed with the build quality and how it works so far. So that would be the one I recommend if you choose to go this path. But if you don't have the stomach for that much money, which I totally get, there are fixed options that are much cheaper that kind of accomplish the same thing. You just have to bust out a step ladder to get your stuff up and down. The point is just don't forget about the space close to the ceiling. It can be a very valuable storage option. And that's it. I hope those five tips were helpful or at least gave you some ideas to apply to your shop or your garage. We all need to fight and take back our sanctuaries or just clean out the garage so your wife can park in here now. See ya.